started all over again. I needed to do that anyway. <clears throat> I'm more sure that the video will go through. The longer you keep running the video, it's just going to corrupt. It's going to happen. It's going to get to like 4 gigs, 3.99 gigs. Then it's going to restart anyway. So the best bet when your guys are doing that is don't let it get to 45. 45 minutes is... 45 minutes. Yeah, she works over here. 45 minutes is... Uh, 45 minutes is... Um, Four gigs of memory. See, dignity hell. This is a good hospital too. Then there's another little place right over here. Another little medical center. That whole place back there is like a medical. Uh, I call them medical malls. Y'all do five miles today. I'll do five. I did six and a half the other day. I could do six with no trouble. I will go up this block over here and come back around. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'll do six miles today. Come back around up top. No big deal. I feel strong. I stretched my back before I left, so that's not a problem. I do six. I could walk all the way down, keep going straight and make it left and come back around, or I can make this right. And there's a lady named Isis that I be fucking with. I don't know, I don't see her no more. <clears throat> she must have moved. She must have moved. But I don't see her no more at all. At all. But this used to be my regular, one of my regular routes, crossover right there. And then make this right. The ISIS goes straight down this way. ISIS goes down that block. I bump one into her right over here on this street. If you look at some of my earlier videos, you'll see. Yeah, on this street here, I bump into her. Then I would go up here to the end of this block and make a left. And if I do that, that'll make a seven mile joint. And if I keep walking, that'll make it eight mile. Yeah, I haven't bumped into her along here. I haven't bumped into her along here since the winter to last winter, which is like January, well, just before the virus. Yeah, home girl next door could go in through here. She works here. And this, uh, I look, and this right through here. I'll tell you some medical mall type of shit. Whew. Yeah, back to her. I told her, I said, you gotta stop that bullshit, man. And then she seen I wasn't going for it. I wasn't white night and I stopped. After that one time with the crazy guy, I stopped white nighting. Cause right after that, she was just trouble. She's she's like a someone that gets high up and um, get all high and uh, and next you know the police are involved type of stuff. And she's the type that gives a lot of um, a lot of uh, I call them false positives. <laughs> she gives a lot of false positives, sexual, sexual, um, 
invitations. In itself, when you invite a man over to your place, that's a sexual advancement. We all are grown people. You call me up and say, can you come over? And I come over, because we could talk on the phone. And I come over, you know what time it is. It's not about, oh, that doesn't mean she, she wants sex. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean this, that doesn't mean that. It's like, and that's why guys never get blamed when they take the pussy. Because how the fuck are you just going to call some dude up? And he comes halfway from across the state or some shit. Doesn't matter if he comes from halfway across the state or he comes from the apartment next door. How are you going to do that? In the middle of the night. What do you think that's supposed to mean? Like I said, you could talk on the phone. You could text on the phone. You see, and this is where people's getting it all twisted. And then next thing you know, someone's getting locked up for an attempted sexual assault and all this dumb shit. All because a bitch asked you to come over. Not that you invited her over to your house and then try to do something with her. But even if she does come and she sees it's one o'clock in the morning, she sees one o'clock in the morning, okay? And you and you coming over to another man's house, what do you think that shit's about? We're all grown here. We're all grown ups, man. Let's keep it real. <clears throat> and I believe that's what she does to half the guys that come over there. But it always turns out to be bullshit. And just like that teenage bullshit. One day she likes this. I told her, I said, I ain't trying emotional tampon. Motherfucker. The fuck you think I am, bitch? You emotional tampon? You tell the same shit to all the guys. You suck their dick, you fuck them, and then you start telling them about the next man. Like self-sabotaging her own shit. And that's her strategy. Her strategy is to suck your dick, fuck you, and then tell, start telling you about other guys try to triangulate you is what that's called that's called triangulation and starts that triangulation bullshit that's what she does okay which is total fucking insane totally insane but that's what she does and that can cause trouble and most of the guys are just going to get, get wet, get wet and sticky, and leave her be. Get on, get their pants up and on before that bitch even put her fucking panties, pull her panties up. And be gone. Because that's all that shit is. There ain't nothing valuable about that shit. Unless you, make a, unless you got babies up and you can make a baby. Now, if you can make a baby, you can put value on it. But if your shit is all worn out and busted and broke, and you got all kind of shit yanked out of your shit, that box ain't worth nothing. And y'all can get mad at me if y'all want. I'm not trying to say y'all don't look nice and the pussy ain't good and this and that, whatever and whatever. But if no baby can come out of there, if a man can't fertilize the egg because of your something biologically fucked up with you, in all actuality, keep it real, that box is useless.
That's all it is good for. Before a person to dump in there. And I guess this is what these women be doing. A lot of them. They know their shit is broke. Their box is broken. They never making no more babies ever again. That's if they made any in the first place. That's if they made any in the first place. Ain't nobody making no more babies ever again. Ain't nobody making no more babies ever again. And then that pussy is useless. That's all it is good for. For a motherfucker that's dumping. That's all that shit be good for. If that's the case. They got a guy from the weekend, from Saturday. He's out here again, see? Yeah, that's all this use. That's all that shit's useful. There's a leave a nut in it. And this is why these women be doing this shit. They do it to themselves. They be doing that bullshit to themselves. Yeah, they be doing that bullshit to themselves, man. Then they feel useless and feel like a waste. So then they just give it away. That's how that shit works. So, I ain't white knighting for that. You know what am I supposed to be doing? Monitoring. I'm supposed to be monitoring my next door neighbor to make sure there ain't no trip beat her ass up in there. I ain't got no time for that shit. Good morning. Yeah, I ain't got no time for that shit. I ain't gonna be monitoring my next door neighbor. I ain't her pimp. I told her. And this is what she says because I asked her the other day. Well, not the other day. Um, a couple of days after my birthday was the last time I actually talked to her. And that's the first day of October. And now it's the what? 26th. Well, I'll say it was about three weeks ago. The last time I said anything to her. She hasn't texted me. She hasn't called me. She hasn't knocked on my door. And I did the same. The last time. We had something to say. Like I said, I was on the phone. It was late at night. And I was talking to my wife. And, um, and she's in Canada. She lives in Canada. It ain't like a nigga's cheating or something. I've been by myself for years. I've been by myself for the last, um, a living single for the last, you could say, uh, 10 years, man. But me and her still cool. Yeah, we still cool. That ain't no problem. We don't have a problem. And, uh, and it, like a lot of the time she was tapping on my door, I was coming to the door with the phone in my hand with my earplugs on talking and putting up like one finger, like give me a minute, you know. and leave her hanging. So I did that to her quite a few times and left her hanging. <laughs> and like I said, I called her phone by accident that night. Because I was, because uh, my wife, because it's, when you use the phone to call from Canada to the States, it costs money. But if you let the person from the States call you, that's free. That's a mistake a lot of people make. So how me and my wife were doing it for years, she'll say, she'll send me a text and says, call. <clears throat> and if, when I get it and I see, oh, I got a message, it says, call. 
and then I'll finish what I'm doing or whatever. And call her. If I ain't doing shit, I'll pick it up. You know what I mean? Because the box is open. See? The message box is open. And up in the right hand corner, hit the call button. So since me and the other lady was texting earlier, in the day before I called my wife back, <clears throat> she was right there. That box was right there. So when we got disconnected over the phone, what I did was I um I hit her shit by accident. The box was open. The message box. Her message box was open. The lady next door, shit was open. I and I hit that call. I usually just, I didn't, wasn't even thinking. I just hit this call. And then I realized that wasn't the, um, my wife's box wasn't open. That was the, the woman's box was open. So then I'm like chilling for a minute. The phone gets ready to ring one time. Then I realize, oh shit. I start scrambling, trying to not let that shit fucking happen. Try to disconnect it real quick. But it connected. And I guess as soon as she seen my name pop up, she answered the phone quick. Answered that phone fast. As if she was waiting for me to call. I didn't want to lose that connection, that call. So then, I'm like, hey, what's up? How you doing over there? And she goes, I'm okay. I said, you feeling any better than you was feeling last week? Because I said, I didn't see you for a while. I didn't want to bother you. Because I seen, you know, we're going to take you to the hospital and pick you back up. You went back there a couple of times. Are you good now? She was like, yeah, I'm okay. And she goes, uh, um, I don't want you to get mad or anything, but uh, Jared's coming over tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why would I get mad? I said, that's the married guy, right, with the kids. She says, yeah. I said, that's your business, man. I said, you seem to like playing second fiddle or some shit to that effect. You like to be second. You like, you like leftovers or whatever. Some people, they just like that because they think they're pulling somebody away from what they deem important to them. And if they can get attention, I think that's why she likes me. Because she knows I'm married. And, um, been married for 15 years, no divorce. So she's figuring like any other woman, there's something's got to be there then because they didn't divorce yet. That means there's no serious nigga on the chick side and there's no serious bitch on the nigga side, the guy side, you know? So that's her fucking business. She wants to play. She wants to play with other women Men, you got women out of this out there like that. Y'all know who I'm talking about. You guys know exactly who y'all are. Or maybe used to be. You know what I'm talking about. It's like a guy chasing somebody else's girl type shit. That's gay. If I'm creaming and sticky, sleeve my DNA up in my bitch's guts, and you come along and lick it, lick it out, you will climb. <laughs> you a fucking clown ass homo. I don't care what you think. That's what the fuck you are. You're fucking gay and you a clown. To eat a prostitute's pussy. Or someone that's married. Or a promiscuous bitch's pussy. He's got to be one nasty motherfucker. Same like a bitch. 
God, you one nasty bitch. Sucking on a trick nigga's dick. You know he a trick. He done fucked all your girlfriends. And now here you go. <laughs> like I said, that's back to that moral stuff again. It has nothing to do with sex acts. It has to do with morality and your values. That's what I be talking about. Yeah, so she was like, uh, she said I didn't fall for her game. And I told her, uh, I ain't been on this earth this long to be nobody's fucking fool. And I told her, people like, you're going to be a problem around this complex. So they'll have your idea so fast. All they got to do is get a couple of complaints about you tricking out of here. Because that's what you're doing. You're tricking. And you're trying to play that friendship stuff. That's old game. That's old game. You playing that friendship bullshit. My friend, my friend. Johnny, Steve, Bobby, Louie, James. Tommy. No, ho. Oh, you're tricking. You're entertaining men. You can't do that in a complex where there's children, older people, and you know, straight shooters straight people because it's criminal that's criminal activity in this society and now if it was legal then shit cool but it's not because you bring around all kind of strange guys one of the tenants could just be walking out of their building and the motherfucker would just say what you looking at or vice versa Yeah, that very same night when she said some dumb shit about, oh, such and such coming up. I said, the married guy? She goes, yeah. But before she told me she was done with him. I said, you talking about the guy that didn't fucking come to the hospital, take you to the hospital and then give a fuck if you live or die? That guy you talking about? <laughs> the only one that cared about your ass when you were sick like that was me. Everybody look at you as a coronavirus fucking carrying fucking monster. You couldn't even go near your family. I'm the only one that came near you. I said, I'm the only one that touched you. So. And now he's sitting up here at, at, telling me, uh, don't get mad, but uh, don't get upset with me. But uh, what you call is coming over? I'm like, man, eh, please. I said, I was just calling you up to check and see if you was okay. She said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, yeah, well, you enjoy your evening. Bye. And I clicked her off, and then I just pulled up my girl, my wife's box, and hit the call thing, and it was her. And I told her what just happened. I said, yeah, that's that bitch from next door again. I hit her number by, hit her shit by accident. She was like, oh, my God. <clears throat> And even my wife knows. My wife said, that bitch is crazy. She said, that, bitch, that dick ain't even hers. And she losing her fucking mind. I said, yeah. I said, she said that, uh, we was laughing about it. The way I tried to <laughs> disconnect the phone and all that, hitting that shit by accident. Because my wife loves it when I make mistakes and laugh at myself. I'm that person. When I make mistakes, it depends how serious it is. But if it's a silly mistake and I'm trying to be slick, I laugh at myself. We laugh at each other. Yeah, we be laughing at each other's mistakes. I make mistakes and she make mistakes. We be laughing at each other. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we laugh at each other's mistakes. Yeah, you laugh at each other's mistakes, man. You can't laugh at yourself, then you got a problem. This old lady, she's about, um, let's see. She's about, um, I don't know. 
She's about maybe 50. She's about like maybe 50 years old. She's about maybe 50 years old. She's not bad. I don't remember seeing her or that old dude. What Starbucks is bringing out food. It looks like the people's cars. Yeah, it looks like a lady Starbucks bringing out food to people's cars. Yeah, she is. She's getting in. Oh, she's getting in. Yeah, I said to myself, yeah, me and Jose, me and uh, my wife was laughing. She was like, that's your girl. <laughs> but that ain't my girl, shit. It's everybody's fucking girl. I would never claim no girl, woman like that to be my girl. You gotta be kidding me. She's not even loyal to herself. How the fuck she gonna be anyone's girl? For that matter. Yeah, as a matter of fact, how can she be anyone else's? Anybody's girl. If uh, she's not uh, loyal to herself or her family or whatever. I didn't even really want to make a video about this bitch. I haven't even had part of the video. So I'm going to end the video on this shit about her and like I said she seen I just caught her ass coming in 6 o'clock this morning and it doesn't matter because she knows I'll be checking that parking spot the same as she checks mine and she probably said damn he seen my car was gone oh there he goes right there and she's probably wondering I wonder does he know did I, did he know I, I, I snuck out last night <laughs> I just try to keep her honest and safe or whatever. I don't want nothing to happen to her. She's a good people. She been married for 15 years, she got divorced, hooked up with a dollar guy for five years. That's 20. And she's 38 years old. With two kids, one grown and one younger. And She's out here in Arizona living by herself. That says a lot. That says a lot. It says that she's been in abusive relationships. So that says a lot. That's what that means to me. That says a lot. So she had a story, sob story. I kind of fell for it. Went for it for several weeks. And then just shut down. Yeah, then I just shut down. That's all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and there's times I want to see if she's okay or knock on her door and I'm quite sure she feels the same way. But that's not happening. That's not what's happening. Good morning. Yeah, I said that that's not what's really happening here <clears throat> with her. But I'm gonna um, leave her like that. She's still my buddy, she always will be. 
And I'll say something to her sooner or later. I just don't chase women. That's all. Just keeping it 100. I don't chase. And, uh, and I damn sure ain't got nobody knocking, tearing my door down or blowing up my phone. That's a fact. But I do have a, f but I do have a few friends. But I do have a few friends that do call me and would, you know, do me if we were um, together in the same room. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. She's one of them. Same again, Canada. I'll be telling women shit like, I, mean, I would never touch you again anyway. So, to sit around like, talk like you're teasing me or something. What I want you for? I would never touch you again. Other motherfuckers haven't been there already. Niggas has been inside of you. Niggas has already been, you know, hitting those walls, you know, leaving their DNA evidence up in you. Well, I can't eat that now. I'm gonna put my dick in there. You gotta be kidding me. You have to be with me. <clears throat> And show some loyalty and some true, you know, compassion and stuff, real stuff, real human, real human stuff, you know, real human like stuff. None of this throw a plastic bag on your dick <laughs> and, and try and stick it in a hole and think you're getting pussy. You ain't getting no pussy. I ain't getting pussy. How the fuck is that getting pussy? Or getting head. Or for you homos getting ass. How is that getting ass, pussy, or head? When there's a barrier in between there. You eating no pussy with no dental dam or a piece of plastic up there. We're not built like that. We're created that way. Get real. That's just the way I be seeing stuff, man. You can see it however you all want. I can live with or without it. All I'm planning for, actually, to be honest with you guys, I'm just planning on, um, I'm thinking about the next 10 years, really. That's what I'm, that's what I'm concerned the most about. I concern the most about um, my youngest daughter, first of all, and um, my wife's benefits after I pass. I just feel good that she hung in there for longer than 10 years so that she can be eligible to get money from our government that I worked for. And she's young, so she's gonna have time to spend it. Yeah, so that means that she's gonna have time to spend it. It's not like I'm married to some old chick and a bitch gonna die two days after me or a year after me. No, nah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> Hopefully she will get to my age and she get, because she's 20 years younger than me.
So that's going to be a lot of years. They're going to have to give her money. See what I'm saying? They're going to give her money for years. It's like now. I'm 61. She's 39. Well, today she turned 40. So she's 40 as of today. And my birthday is before hers. We born the same month. And my daughter's born, the youngest one is born the same month. So right there in itself. That shows you that uh, I'm 21 years old in her. Right there alone. Right there alone. This is a new Callaway golf ball. I just found that on the ground. Yeah, right there alone. Tells y'all right there that she's... I'm 21 years old in her. If she just made 40 today, and I'm 61. And that's why, I, that's one of the main reasons I did get married. Like I told you again and again. So don't let people scare you all about marriage. If you're about some shit, you done walked, worked, and you're about something, and you got social security money, don't leave none of that shit on the table. Get married so that when you die, your wife will keep getting your money. Good morning. Yeah, and your wife will keep getting your money if you was to pass away. Your wife will still get money even if you was to pass. And that's what you want. Then it all depends on what country she's from, what type of benefits does she have. And when I say your wife will get half of your get, get money, she'll get half of what your benefit is. Whatever your benefit is, she'll get half. If it's a thousand dollars a month, she'll get five hundred for the rest of her life. Plus, she'll get her own money. Whichever one is higher. It's a mathematical equation, but she'll benefit. They'll still have to peel that money off. Shit, I might outlive her. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows. I might wind up outliving her. It's being cool lately. The um, I got uh, a mile and a half to go. I'm going to start this back up. Peace, y'all.